Saidi, what is the Barzakh and can we travel there in the dunya lifetime? Jazakallah khairun, dear Sayyidi, you changed my life. Allah bless you. Barzakh is a world of light or the world of the grave. Travel there, you can I don't know if there's a traveling there for, for normal people but uh, to witness one's own grave is important. That to meditate and contemplate at times and asking Allah that make this to be my grave and that led me to clean my grave and my station within the grave. And again at Ramadan the last 10 days at Kuman and Nar is again a meditation time for that reality. I think we have the talks on Muhammadan, uh, Muhammadan way, the website about khalwa and seclusion and then you watch and read those articles about the khalwa and understand how to make intention for seclusion and learning how to seclude oneself daily. As soon as you come home from work or late at night that you make intention for seclusion and begin the practices of meditating and contemplating within the, the space we have and visualizing the grave at times and that you want that place to be clean, the want the condition of the grave to be illuminated inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, I tend to be interested in world history but there was some heartache about World War I and World War II. How can one use an interest like this to serve the tariqah? Have an interest in world history and how to serve the tariqah? with the, the interest in, in world history is to know that whatever we learned in world history is incorrect and that history is actually his, H-I-S, story, S-T-O-R-Y. So we haven't come across a history story that is correct. You go to one country and they, they say that the Indians were in the way and we got rid of them and they were attacking us. Go to the other side of the street and ask the Indians what they felt about you when you came here. Yeah. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. They say, you guys came, you start to eat all of us and attack all of us. So <laughs> history is going, to, is going to be based on who's writing it and what point of view they have from their side. And they're always victorious in their own point of view. So I, I didn't put too much understanding upon history and the most important history is from At-Tabari, Islamic history and the haqqaiqs and realities. I think Muhammad Jabbar Tabari, Tabari is the sort of chronological documentation of Islamic history from the Islamic perspective of all the Prophets of Allah from the beginning of the creation of Nur Muhammad all the way until the, the Risalat of Sayyidina Muhammad So that type of history of Islamic history has to do and from the Islamic perspective has to do with a very correct understanding of the heavenly kingdom and what Allah has sent from the heaven the kingdom. The problem with the dunya history is very dunya oriented. 
Right, so now uh, after we discuss this, the 70,000 Prophets of Allah were dark skinned. Where's that written? In none of their history they talk about this reality. So what, what, what of their history are we to, to understand and, and to document as a truth? So as soon as we study things that are not truthful and how to discern or discern the truth is itself its own job that you have to spend lifetimes reading through all their things, re-verify everything they said. For what? It's a waste of time because the dunya is dying. So our path to illumination is through the heavenly realities. That's why anyone who likes academia and studying, go to Muhammadan way and choose a section on huruf choose a, a reality on, on the meditation, tafakkur or, or any of the realities that are being taught, read sort of enthusiastically and immerse yourself in those realities. Those realities if you study just a little bit of them, they have an eternal fountain that will illuminate the heart for all of eternity. Now this Indian came and, and that cowboy did this has nothing for us in paradise, nothing. As a matter of fact you become more confused, they didn't even go to the moon. So wh what do you want to, to read about and put all your faith in? So for us if we spend the time that we have and illuminate ourselves towards heavenly teachings, they can eternally blossom fruits within our soul because you die with that knowledge. And every time you pick up and begin just to read one, two lines of it, Allah is expanding it when you sleep. So why spend the time on something that has no value, not for your eternal value and not for your dunya because your dunya will be confused. Whatever these people taught was very confusing, none of it real. And anything we study from the reality it eternally blossoms within the soul and our eternal journey, we take it with us when we go inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu As we approach the Hajj, how can we discern if, when we are called to the Prophet's grave and the Kaaba? How do we know it's our time to make the pilgrimage? You have to get the Hajj book, you get the Hajj reality book, you get the meditation book and that you should be meditating every night and going to the presence of Prophet Why you have to wait for Hajj to be called? The calling is now, so it means that anyone who's listening to these talks Every night and especially the talks last night was teaching that your breath is from Muhammadun Rasulullah is why we call nafas al-rahmah because the mercy and rahmatan lil alameen is breathing into your lungs. When you don't want the air of shaitan and don't want the air from dunya and you begin to make your tafakkur a mask from the heavens will come and come upon your reality and begin to teach you to breathe from their presence. And then you're understanding now in this reality, who's breathing into you? Because this is a nafas al rahmah, this is a breath from the own mercy. Who's Allah's mercy? Means then we begin to understand that this is an immense love and ishq of Prophet So means every night is meditating, every night is contemplating, every salah you're in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Assalamu alaykum ya yuhan nabiyya sayyya rasuli kareem khabibul azim ujul halana wa ishfarana. The gaze upon my condition and that my face upon the ground and my face at your feet that represent me to Allah and perfect my character. So every moment is, is a dialogue with Prophet When that connection is strong, the love and the yearning is strong, 
the invitation is already there. Why did then you need an invitation? You need the only excuse to spend the money, get the ticket and go. So it's already there, you go. And those who don't have that ability and even if they have the ability every moment they're meditating and contemplating and seeing themselves at the feet of Prophet trying to by being and keeping the adab that they're at the Rosa Sharif and at the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So that, that is a given inshaAllah, they don't need a, a special invitation. If, if Look at then the other way, if Prophet is allowing you to hear this teaching then you're accountable for the teaching. The Wahi allowed you out of 8 billion people on earth to hear these realities or hear this reality. Why? What is it that he wants from you? Did you accomplish that? Most likely no. So it means that we're accountable. When we say that, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasulul Kareem, how Allah gave me this ability to, to hear this reality, to even understand that this breath when I meditate and contemplate from paradise is that you will sustain me. We said before, on earth you're dead, don't think you're alive, you're actually the walking dead people. And if this earth could be understood is like a pool, anyone who comes onto earth they're like in a swimming pool that you think they're alive, they're actually dead. Only when they die in that pool will Prophet come and revive them. So this is what you call like an oxymoron or, or, or understanding people don't understand. You think you're alive, hayyam in a maitam in a hay, that there is a, 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 a deception happening. You think you're alive, they say, no I'm alive, they say, no you're actually very much dead because if you were alive you would have been alive. Mawta qabl al maut. only by the time we surrender and die in this physical world means we lose the desire, we meditate, contemplate, the yearning overtakes, the yearning becomes so heavy that they don't find that enjoyment in this world. And that what happens? When they die in this world who revives them from the hereafter? That's the one whom comes and resuscitates into their breath, <sighs> means the, the nafas of Prophet takes them from the death of this world that they operate in into the oceans of hayat. And these are the oceans and the servants of eternity. And how he described his holy companions who were extreme lovers, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq as salam, why? That he is, look at Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, the one whom died before he died, means the, the life of this world left them. And what Allah gave to them is the life of the hereafter. Which is what? The breath of Prophet within their being and he sustains their entire breath. And they breathe in from that, that nafas and why we call nafas al-rahmah, the mercy. The most merciful breath that Allah can send to creation is from the breath of Prophet in which every knowledge, every reality, every hayat, everything within it is sustaining in that reality. So means then this is the accomplishment, Allah gave us this by just tuning into this channel, by following this shaykh, by understanding from these knowledges then Allah is going to ask and hold us to account that what did you do with it? When you knew that your breath and the potential breath that would sustain you would be from Muhammadun Rasulullah did you try to achieve it? Which you meditate so much and contemplate and, Ya Rabbi I don't anything from this, I die from this. It doesn't mean you don't have anything, you may have everything on earth but none of them compared to anything 
to the presence of Allah in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So Allah can give them everything but in the presence of Prophet none of it is of any value, it diminishes to nothingness. And their life was to train neither trade nor business or commerce diverts them from the remembrance of, of Allah. Doesn't mean they won't have trade and business because the companions were immensely wealthy. They were merchants that travelled the world and established Islam on every, every continent. But Allah describes that neither trade or business diverted them from the remembrance, why? Because when that connection is connected and the ishq and love of Sayyidina Muhammad overwhelms their being, it has no comparison to anything from this earth. So then Allah holds to account, then what did you do to achieve that? And then that's why they come and teach, go out and get food, go do the milad. When the milad comes this is a huge celebration for us because this is the point of the nuqh that for the sake of this milad, Ya Rabbi open my heart with an immense light, open my being and my wujud with an immense light. Let me to be one of those recipients of nafasa rahmah in which every breath is coming. How the shaykh is speaking knowledges, where he's taking that from? Means every breath coming in from Prophet or all of the uloom and the knowledges that are coming out. They don't have anything from themselves, it's not like something is recorded somewhere but it's that very breath that gives them power, it's that very breath that gives them life, it's that very breath that gives every knowledge, every uloom, every shifa and every healing, every du'a, everything about that reality is because the breath of the merciful. Whom Allah dressed His rahmah and His mercy. And Allah's promise was, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ I would not have sent the reality of Prophet except that He's a mercy to you. So of course then He's the merciful breath and the ones whom encompass that mercy, their duty is to dispense that mercy. Allah says, I wouldn't have sent it if it wasn't for that sake. So it's the very sake of that mercy that everyone is gathering, everyone is meditating, everyone is contemplating exactly what Allah wanted because it would have been a waste of time then. If nobody wanted to catch the mercy, to live in the mercy, to be dressed by the lights of its mercy then Allah reverse is that, why would I have sent it? Except that it was a mercy to your creation. So there's an Im- immense gift from Allah inshaAllah that to, to live this life, to unlock its realities and then to hold ourselves to account. That's why we do what we do, that's why we, we take the abuse that we take, that's why we go everywhere that we're supposed to go, we do everything that we're supposed to do, we spend what we're supposed to spend, we broadcast what we're supposed to broadcast, we feed who we're supposed to feed, why? So the merciful eyes and the merciful breath, unzur halana, unzur halana ishfanana that please with your beautific face, ya wajik al kareem that gaze upon me and that intercede for my condition, my hal, unzur halana that do you see my hal in my state and that you can only fix my condition. But nazari kareem that through the light and the realities that come through your eyes, dress me from nur, dress me from eternal hayat and from the power of your breath and every knowledge that comes from your lisan, dress my breath, dress my tongue. With all hearing and all seeing from all these seven points they're asking from Prophet to dress them and bless them and continuously be in a state of that dress. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us from the immensity Subhanahu wa dun mulki wa malakut. And this month of 11 with Garma Sharif, 
and the secrets of the Qadr and the Qadri and Shaykh Abdul Qadr and all, all the shaykhs of the oceans of power that this is immense, immense realities of the Zulfiqar in which La ilaha illallah can only be opened its reality by Muhammad and Rasulullah SubhanAllah Rabbika Rabbin Izzat Amma Yasifoon wa Salaamun Al Mursaleen Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Bi Hurmati Muhammad Al Mustafa wa Bi Siri Surat Al Fatiha Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.